It is my covenant honor to call up Rabbi Jacobson to give us tools, to give us ammunition, how to go home in Mi'at Hashem, and how to prava Chodesh Shalom, how to be misparal for Agitke Ben Shtiur. It's my honor to call up Rabbi Jacobson Schlitter. It was about Mitzvah Bacher who wanted to give a grace of drosh, a grace of shetel. So he comes to his mother, he says, Mama, I want to talk about Yichis. Where we come from? She says, Ah, the Baba, Gewalt, the Zayde, the Elter Baba, the El She goes, No, 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 Mama, all the way back. Where did it begin? Says where it began, but Aisha's bottle of Kimbasa Shemayim as Sa'aris. On Friday, he created Adam and Chava. They decided to have children. The rest is history, or actually her story. Avram Yitzhak Yaakov, Sar Rivka Rachalei, and here we are. Kvaldik comes to his father. His father was a graduate from a distinguished university. He considered himself a masculine, an enlightened person. He says, Tati, where do we come from? Tells him about the lineage, the Yichas. No, no, no. All the way in the beginning. He says, ah, all the way in the beginning, we have come from apes. <laughs> Explains to him the Yisoidus of Darwinism. The Shittas Aistatchus, Evolutia, this philosophy of evolution. After hundreds of millions of years, the apes evolved into Homo sapiens into people. That's how it worked. Where did the apes come from? Came from monkeys. Where did the monkeys evolve from? Other primates. Tati, how did it all begin? It all began with an explosion of gas and bacteria. <laughs> Comes back to the mama. Says, mama, I'm confused about the Bamitzvah Drush. She says, what? So I want to talk about Yichis, where we come from. You tell me, Daddy tells me we come from apes, we come from monkeys, we come from bacteria. What do I say? She looks at him and she says, My tire kid, there's no contradiction here. Your father was talking about his side of the family. <laughs> This mama is no stirrer. I live an island in Relikim Chai. Why do I say this? You know, Tayyid Ayyim, I'm going to try to speak to both sides of the family here. Yomin is small to Freud. Was Ayyid. Chassidus Shayid came from Poland to the United States. He wanted to become a citizen. On Ezrach from America. One problem, we just heard from Ibn Naftali that he didn't know Yiddish, he didn't know English. You become a citizen, they ask you questions about America, history. You have to know some things, he didn't know English. How do you become a citizen? So his Chava told him, I'm gonna set you up for an interview with an old man who makes people citizens, and he always asks five questions. Already 50 years, he asks five questions. You don't have to understand English. You just have to memorize the Chaim Chazidim, five chivas, five responses, you'll become a citizen. Gewaldik, what are his five questions? He always meets the people, he says, I have five questions. The first question is always, what's your name? You don't have to understand English. He says, what's your name? You hear, you say, Moshe Weiss. Question number two, he's always gonna ask, how many children do you have? You'll say five. He's gonna ask the third question. How many states in the US? You'll say 50. His fourth question is, who was the first president of America? You'll say George Washington. Fifth question, do you have parents? You'll say, thank God both. 
for three months, this Chassidim Shayid is memorizing, like Mishnai's Balpeh, these five answers were bait in Mila Bimila, Moshevites, five children, 50 states, George Washington, thank but he, I the grace the day comes, he walks in for the interview. The old man looks at him and he says, you want to become a citizen of the U.S.? Makes like this. I have five questions. Great, you're not. Question number one. Tell me what was the name of the first president of the United States of America? <laughs> Without skipping a heart's beat. He says, my <laughs> Tell me, how many states are there in America? He says, five. He says, tell me, how many children do you have? He says, 50. <laughs> he looks at this year. Gayid met a streimel, met a bekesh, en gepeyes, a vach, said the shayid. Put on a streimel in honor of the day. Looks at this year, and he says, what's your name? He says, George Washington. <laughs> The old man sitting on the other side of the desk was an Altaid. So he immediately understood what's going on. He looks at him and he says, Zogmich, very Michigan, the meat of the deer. Who's crazy in this room? You or me? And he says, Thank God, both. <laughs> Why do I tell you this anecdote? I'll tell you why. You could memorize lines and say all the right things. At some point, you're going to get stuck. There's rabbis, there's speakers, there's rabbunim, there's rosh yeshivas, there's lecturers, there's balei darshunim, who have all their lines memorized. Ven, take off their glasses. Called momadaka, koil raj gogol. Tkia, shvarim, trua, tkia, mevait, malach. At some point, if you're just memorizing lines, you're going to get stuck with real things. There was one Sayyid, a schnorrer. You know what a schnorrer is, yeah? Guy who has a PhD in fundraising. Grace schnorrer. A captain, Ben Captain, Ben Bnoishal Captain. Already shame the son of Noyach was Goizy, you should be a captain. One of those. You know, goes in the family as a like hundreds of daughters. But he would always buy the lottery. You know, Hevra that buy the lottery every day. They put on film, they buy the lottery. He'd buy the lottery. 45 years he bought the lottery. But here, Yoim, was $263 million lottery. His wife gets a call. Is this the house of XYZ? She says, yeah. You won? Your husband won? 263 million? She calls the roof and she says, I have a serious situation. I know my husband, Chaimei Uncle. He's gonna hear that he won the lottery. He's gonna drop dead on the spot. He's gonna collapse with a heart attack. I don't know if he's gonna survive. I don't know. Was tuch. The Ruf says, you send him to me. As the brings you near, because the gun fell in the cup. No, no, no. And then, she says, he tells, she, he, he tells her, tell your husband he should come to see the Ruf before he comes home. She calls her brother, Chaim Yankel, the Ruf will the Chazan, I did the Kim Stein. The Ruf wants to see him. Comes into the Ruf, Rebbe, was titzich. The Rebbe says, I'm just here to ask you, what's Tutsuchi Panosa? Thank you. How's your Panosa? <laughs> he says, Rebbe, you know I'm a captain, Benoishal captain, Ben Benoishal captain, Zint Chom Ben Noyach. Okay, so good, so good. Sure. Positive. The Ruf says, what's so yish, so yish. What do you do with Sakaili, Ishtadlis, to make money? <laughs> the Rebbe, I buy the lottery of a device to sell it, son, I never win the lottery. He says, how do you know? How do you know? Goyim in Montana win the lottery. In Kentucky, in Delaware. A Heimish Yid Vyich is not winning $263 million. He says, Are you pulling my Hashem Dover? Somebody has to win, maybe it's you. He says, Rebbe Sacholim, Shecholmu, Achaidim, Alachaidim, Baeis Chaloimus Shalachaidim. It's not happening. I don't win the 
lotteries. I buy it. I buy it. L'shem Yichud. I don't win a lottery. How do you know? Let's say today you did win the lottery. Give us a look. It says, Rebbe, if I won the lottery, I give the roof half. And he claps on the floor. He had a heart attack. <laughs> It's easy to be a spectator on the outside. You give people advice. On the inside, everything changes. So I say to you that the truth is now, after being a whole Shabbos here, Baruch Hashem, I feel like Me'ain, Moshe Rabbeinu, in front of the sna, in front of the burning bush. What happened? He wants to see the burning bush. A Sidon of El. Shem tells him, Shalno me alechol irad me al raglechi ke amokim ash hatoy middle of Admas Kodesh. Take off your shoes because you're standing on holy soil. What happened? It says in Medrash Rabbe, the burning bush represented the pain of the Jewish people throughout history. Moshe Rabbeinu, the first man of Yisrael, observed his children, his people, Am Hashem. They won't be destroyed, but they're going to hurt. And Moshe naturally says, Asura no ve'ere. Let me look, let me understand, let me fashtay, let me analyze. How does it work? Shem turns to him and says, Moshe Rabbeinu, one day you're going to become a Rebbe. The first thing when you're standing in front of a snake, you know what you do? Take off your shoes from your feet. Because when you're standing in the presence of a person in pain, you're standing in Kodesh HaKadoshim. And in Kodesh HaKadoshim, you take off your shoes. In Kodesh HaKadoshim, you're not a philosopher. In Kodesh HaKadoshim, you're not a theologian. In Kodesh HaKadoshim, you're not a mumcha. In Kodesh HaKadoshim, you're not an explainer. In Kodesh HaKadoshim, you take off your shoes. And with humility, you recognize ki amokim ashata eimad alav admas kodesh. You all know how true it is what I'm going to say now. That a person who has been tested with tremendous pain in his or her life stands in a different plateau, in a different place, in a different universe, in a different madrega than people who were not tested that way. So I say to you today, as I'm going to share what I want to share with you, Be'ezer Hashem Yisbarach, the first thing I'm doing is I'm taking off my shoes off my feet. Ki ha'mokri masha'ata emed alav admas kodesh. And I share with you four points as this Shabbos Kodesh shares its goodbye with us. Point number one, individuality. Point number two, living with the now and thriving in the now. Point number three, harmony in the home, Shalom Bayez. Point number four, discovering my purpose. Point number one, individuality. I'm going to speak now like a brother to brothers and like a brother to sisters. I'm going to speak lev le lev, heart to heart. From somebody who sometimes sees the other side. And I think the best way to illustrate what I want to say is a scientific experiment I once read about. There was a French scientist, a French naturalist. His name was Henry Farber. He won the Nobel Prize in the early 1900s. He was a big expert on insects. Especially, he did research on caterpillars. Please up on a caterpillar of Yiddish. 
Caterpillar. A flush in Kaidish, Zachal, right? A Zachal. MS? Zachal, a caterpillar, right? You familiar with caterpillars? Those of you who went to camp and hated sports, and you ran away to the forest, and you went to catch frogs, and salamandras, and every worm you caught, you thought your mamash found, Kesavazov, and probably in your search for your frogs, you discovered caterpillars. Those little creatures that crawl around. And the Seder with caterpillars is they walk in processions. A procession is a talucha, a parad. You can have 300 caterpillars. Head to toe, head to toe, head to toe, mamash attached like a choo-choo train. With the leader in the front looking for food. And hundreds will follow in mamash dovuk attached. Henry Farber was a curious guy, and he wanted to see how deep is this gene, that nature that Hashem put into the caterpillar. You know what he did? I'm going to show you what he did. He took, Henry Farber took a flower pot on Otzitz, and he overturned the flower pot on Zoe. He took a group of the caterpillars, and he put them on the rim of the flower pot, on the edge of the flower pot. The Chiddush is, they're in a circle now. They're doing hakofas. There's no leader, because they're going in a circle. There's nobody directing them. They're following each other. So everyone is following the other one, who's following the other one, who's following the other one. There's nobody in the front. Now he takes food, and he puts it in the middle of the flower pot, in the middle, and he waits to see. Which caterpillar is going to tear itself away from the circle to go get its food to live? And you know what he observed? He watched the caterpillars for seven days. And here is the facts of the experiment that I read. After seven days, he watched every single last caterpillar die from hunger, starvation, dehydration, thirst, and exhaustion. The food was a few inches away, but the need to be part of the circle was stronger than the search to go get the food that's going to let you live. As long as I'm going to stay in the circle. Many of us live our whole lives like that. We know that our food is somewhere else. We know that we need to go there for our food. But the emotional pressure to be in the circle becomes so powerful that we sometimes sacrifice what we need most for our neshama and our goof as long as we're part of the circle. Every person in their own life, but everyone sitting here in this room, in their life, needs to appreciate what they're going through and respect your boundaries and not force yourself to always be in the circle of everybody else. Because you're on a different journey than many other people. And you have to respect that. How many told me? It's true with the Ezra. I'm Noshim and so much more true with the Ezra's Noshim. The levels of guilt and regret. It's not a push at the thing. When somebody's brother has 41 eight o'clock and is going to Chassanus every other night. And his own Mishpach comes and there's such a mixture of simcha and atzus, of kin and happiness, and you blame yourself, and you get upset at yourself. Why am I not a good Jew? Where's my other sister? We sometimes don't have boundaries. You're not in everybody's circle. Respect that. You have to know what you need. You need to know what works.
works for you, you have to know it doesn't work for you. Some places don't go. Create your kvula. Some conversations you don't have to be part of. People, the pressure to be in everybody's circle and everybody's akafa, sometimes they come home. So, Baruch and Sushtoy is depressed. You have to know when, yeah, when not. You have to respect your boundary. Let me tell you something. A lot of people mean well, they don't get it. They don't get it. You're going out with your friends. You're drinking coffee. You're eating a little sushi. They start talking about a conversation. For them, it's natural. They don't understand. They don't mean bad. But they're insensitive. You have to know that. You have to be aware who you are, who you're not. People sometimes say things. At the panel, somebody started to talk about all the schoolers that people give them. Every Monday and Thursday, somebody finds a schooler. My Talmud once asked me, Rabbi Jacobson, maybe you saw Pesach Kisve Arizal and Zoya, Pesach Zgula for Parnassah. I told him, yeah, I found one. Get a job. <laughs> <laughs> I found it. They say, we, we, who's that? Zoya, Kisve Ari, we, Tanya, we. Is it not Pesach somewhere, Pesach, a book, by Rache, Hashem, Alekach, and Bechoy, Lashat, Asa? I saw a pasuk on Shaisha's Yom Em Tavit. So the Mechil Tezu Mitzvus Ase was a yid on Thirteenth Avenue. It's the Hashnari. He's begging this. So a yid is going to dress up, shame a suit, a suitcase, with mamish, gewaldig. Shnar looks at him, stuck and stuck. Achmas says, "Kala." So it's a chabinish. Shnar says, "Go get a job." <laughs> I work for a living. You work for a living. One of the women who's here, Shabbos, tells me a Maisa last night. Mamish last night. Isha Tzitkanis, she tells me. Just there was a he, he had a big farm. But he, a young, a hundred chickens died. Comes running to the Zrebe that he had. He says, Zrebe, hundred chickens died. He says, I'm a gay for Marcus Pachitis. The Rebbe says, go, take Cholent. But it has to be Cholent, Shemiz Bashel, Be'ed of Shabbos, Ache Chatzois that was sold near the mikveh. <laughs> and make sure there's kishke in it, beans, potato, and psar keves. And you feed it to all the other chickens. So it's Gilla. He saw it up, says Gilla. He goes, he gets the mikveh, cholent, this mama's the cholent was already in the mikveh. <laughs> it has the tam, it has the deyach out. <laughs> <laughs> he gives it to the chickens. Wakes up the next day, another hundred chickens. He's got Alvi, he's got Come to life with some rabbit, rabbit, not hiding it down the drain. I have a skill in the other ones. Go to the castle. For 40 days, 40 nights, Davin. And then come and give them seven layer cake. May you uge, shenechel b'shalashudas, in chutzer abayni. You give it to the chicken. He gives the seven layer cake, wakes up in the morning, another hundred chickens dead. Comes running to the Rebbe, Rebbe I'm going to lose my whole plan. No, sir. Already 300 chickens. The Rebbe looks at him and says, Listen, the Shailas Biffle chicken. What was her point? Her point was not to question or delegitimize different things that people embrace. Nobody knows how Yeshua Hashem happens. The point is that it's easy for a person who doesn't understand the pain to tell people what to do, what not to do, what to say, what to say, go here, do this. It says in Svodim here, it says in Svodim here. But you have to have boundaries of self-respect. You have to know when you're in the circle and you have to know when it's time to say, I'm not part of the circle and I'm fine with not being part of the circle. There's no need to give a person themselves extra yisudim from the pressure, from the emotional lachats, from the social anxiety. Yes, a chasana of a nephew is going to be very difficult. You're not a malach. It's, 
It's going to be more of over Chayshik Mishtamshin Be'evuvia. In the most beautiful moments, there could be very simple feelings of a human being. It doesn't make you an evil person. It makes you a man. We don't control every emotion. We control what we do with the emotion. You're not taking a gun and killing anybody. You're feeling a difficult anxiety. You have to know your boundaries and respect it. Because I did not choose my circle. And I have to know where my food is. My gashmi is the kafut, my ruchni is the kafut. Point number two. Living with the now and thriving in the moment. One of the issues that most people have, especially Yidin, kol shekei v'kal people who are on a difficult journey in life, is we're always waiting for the great day. I ask a yid, when are you going to have Shalom Bayis? But we're both in different ways of scale. <laughs> Everyone is waiting. The Bucher, the Bucher says, when I finish Yeshiva, I'm going to be a happy person. <laughs> This one says, when I get married, when I find a shidduch, then I'll be happy. This one, when this great Yeshua happens, then I'm going to relax. When this happens, then I'm going to start living. It's a normal hergish. We all understand it. Life happens always now. Now. The Halik Islam everyone said, Mitchila oiv de avoy de zara hoyu avoy seinu. We say on the night of Pesach. And he explained. That's how you begin the whole Agada. <laughs> Imagine you're getting married. Beautiful, the chitin. He gets up at the Shavu Baruch. He said, Uf, Uf. He said, You should just know the yichis. We come from the monkeys. We became civilized. But fine, I know Maschil begins the Messiah Mishvach. He's celebrating it. See, it's Mitzrayim. Was actually the Shemhar of the Zayi the Terach. A Yid once told me he believes in Darwinism, Yom Kippur. So that's why I can't come to hear me speak because I believe in creation. I say you're not coming to Shul at all. He says I'm coming for Yiske. So Yiske? You should go to Bronx Zoo for Yiske. <laughs> Go to the ape. Shalom <laughs> I said, you know why you're laughing? Because you deep down know that the ape is Nishtan El Deep down you know you're a human being. Can skim in Shofa Yiske. It won't kill you. Your father won't kill you. Says the Helik Islamimah, you want Yitzhiyah Smitzrayim? You know what the opening my remark is? Yitzhiyah is going free. Going free. How? One philosophy. Mitchila is Oiv De Avay De Zorah. Achshav, kevano amokem lavedos. There's two philosophies in life. One philosophy in life is mitchila. I'm always focusing on what happened. That's a philosophy of every desire. I'm a victim of everybody, and I'm always living. You know what she told me yesterday at the bar mitzvah? The nerve. You know what he told me at the Shavabruchas? The Chitzpah? I'm a shik, it's a nuvel, a tibach. My wife, Mamash, had to hold me down. For 10 years, you remember it. That's how we deserve Kevonu Amokim, how do you know you have a shaykhist with the Reboi Neshuvayla? One word. For Achshav. There's something called now. Why? 
Zog de Heilike Bal And it's the focus of the second section of Tanya Shari Chodvemun. That Hamachadish Betivoy Bechol Yoim Tumit Masibereshis is not only Bechol Yoim, it's Bechol Rega Verega. Every moment Hashem recreates not only the universe, every detail of the universe. So if you want to be in touch with life, you have to be in touch with now. Because if I'm not in touch with now, I'm not in touch with the heartbeat of the Elikus. I'm not in touch with the heartbeat of creation. Who is the most important person in my life? The person I'm speaking to right now. That's always the most important person. What's the most important moment in my life? This moment is the most important moment in my life. Of course I remember yesterday. Of course I plan tomorrow. Of course I look forward to tomorrow. But if you want the oir chudur shal tziyoy toyev in this given ayin akilu la'oyroi. By the way, it's not in the sechaba. You have to have va'achshav. I'm a chadish. I'm going to tell you a ma'isa. It's not a ma'isa. Stam a ma'isa. You do shalmi masech tepeya. Listen to a ma'isa. This ma'isa can fill up ten books of psychology. Listen to a ma'isa. Rabbi Yochanan and Rishlokish decide to go to the Beis Hamerchitz. They want Erev Shabbos Ashvitz mit Hamikveh. They go. Who's in front of the Beis Hamerchitz? Ashnarer. Yerushalmi Peyer. It's not a Chiddush of the 20th century. Eshtayt. Chnosis Kala. Whatever he's asking for. Ahinkadika, Ablinda. You remember your Maisa? Yeah? Yeah. Rabbi Yochanan get a kick off him. Rishlokish get a kick. They want to get the base hamechitz. We stand with the gabba in the base hamechitz. Was a strange mensch. And they knew if they're going to come late, he's going to lock them out of the mikveh. You know, where there's people that work in mikvehs. That's uh, my interpretation. They're rushing. They tell the yid, "We're going into the base hamechitz. It's a chab vashem. We're going to bathe. We'll come out. We'll give you money." They walk in. They do whatever they have to do. They come out. You know, shall me pay a paid chess. He's dead. What would you feel? What would you feel? The Yid was saying, Bissel Stocker, give me something. Yeah, give me something. I could buy, I could buy herring, I could buy a kichel, I could buy a piece of cake, I could buy chont. It's all by the mikveh, you remember? <laughs> <laughs> It's the Pnei Yosef of Yerushalmi. Pnei Yitzchak, Pnei Yosef. You know who wrote the Pnei Yosef of Yerushalmi? Yeah? He's dead. He's dead. I want to know what you would do then. What would you do? What would most people do? <gasps> Can't believe it. Pnei Yosef. Go to therapy for 10 years. <laughs> you go to every Mekubal and every Rufa or Tikka. Gnuma, but you killed somebody. Right? The guilt, the guilt. The miser spoke about the blame game. <laughs> Is that a blame game or what? Rabbi Yoichen and Rish Lakish, G'day Le Ador. You heard before about the Yoichen about Metziah Pedalit. G'day Le Ador indirectly just killed a Jew. But the Yerushalmi gives us different mice. Rish Lakish turned to the Bioichen. And you know what he told him? I quote, Lo yizachinu lechabdoi b'chayav. Nechabdoi la'acha moisoi. We missed an opportunity. We, we weren't zoicha. But you know, he needs something. He's a Jew. The Neshama doesn't disappear. Somebody needs to do a tara. Somebody needs to give him tachrichen. That's to be a levaya. That's to be kvura. Who's going to do it? We weren't zoicha. We weren't zoicha to help him in his life. He needs something. They go to do the levaya for him. They take him to do the tana. They take off the clothes. What do they discover? In the tash, in the tash, he had a huge sack of golden coins. 
Egg of Ender. He was richer than Rothschild. And so he's like the Pnei Yosef. He was richer than Rothschild with Buffett together. Warren Buffett together. The guy at the Buffett. That's the end of the story. Now, boy, say, explain to me the story. Did the Bjorn and Shlokas have to do tshuva? Of course. But if tshuva is turning you into an obsessed person, so then you're failing your responsibility now. Because I'm, I'm in a state of blaming, that's why you shouldn't have Olavaya, you shouldn't have Kura. Rabbi Yochan and Shlokash had the ability to ask themselves, HaMechadosh B'Tuvay, where is God now? What does Hashem want for me now? Now is my life. Now is my Hatzlocha. Now is the peak of my moment. This is the moment. Because this is the moment when the whole creation is being renewed right now. Tomorrow is tomorrow. The next day is the next day. And I'm going to work for that day for Hatzlocha. But now is now. And you know what happens when you do that? You realize 90% of the time you weren't as bad as you may have thought you were. You busy making a story that you killed somebody. This guy never had a crankshaft. He couldn't use his money. He could have bought himself cholent for seven years. Ad He was never, he suffered from stinginess. Tell you mice I heard from an interesting yid. Some of you heard the name, some of you probably not. He's a Jew, his name is Eliezer Wiesel. Eli Wiesel. Eli Wiesel grew up in Sigit as a Vishnitzer Chassid. He was sent to Auschwitz, lost most of his family, including his father. He became a Nobel Prize, uh, he won the Nobel Prize for Peace. He always remained close with uh, his childhood friend, Rabbi Nasha Cotton. He's a Yid, I know him, he's a friend of my father, all of us But it doesn't look like the classic vision of Let's let's put it that way. <laughs> but he grew up with Chassidim, so he wrote a lot about Chassidim and Chassidus. Became a professor, a journalist, very famous writer. He stood up to Reagan when he went to Bitburg to visit the graves with the SS, Yimach Shemayn, He has a, a lot of schuyas that he did. He still fights strong for the Jewish people. He's an El I heard this mice from him. This is a kid in, in Europe. Whether it's a marshal or it's a mice, it's not a Negea. The word is not a Negea. So a young man, I'm a Vakish. You know what I'm a Vakish is? Searching, searching, searching. What is he searching for? Why did God create the world? What's the mice felt? I knew a shikir lived in my neighborhood. He would drink all day. They called him Zalman the Shikir. On Eastern Parkway, he was a regular. But he had eyes in the He once called him and says, You want to know about life? The first posseg. But Aisha's bottle of Kimasa Shemayim Vesadat, what does Rashi right away say? Omer the Bitzchak, Loi Hayat Sadach. Not a shikir can as the head. <laughs> there was really no need for it. <laughs> this young man went around searching, why did Hashem create the world? And he went to every roof, every dayan, every tzaddik, every reb, every mekubal, every rosh yeshiva, every philosopher, every theologian, every scholar, every genius, every author. Why, 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 why? I need to understand why I can't sleep. For years he went, nobody could give him an answer. This one gave this stupid answers. Finally, he came to a chacham godel b'moid a chashem and Rebbe. Yes, it was else. Walk said, he says, Rebbe, I've been searching for years. They say, you're the man. You know everything. Freg my kin, Sha'al, what's your question? Why did he create a world? Crazy mishugana, for hakta, for zhlobita. Why? 
that ever took a look at him, gave him a slap in the face. Says, this I never heard, this I never heard. <laughs> <laughs> then he looked at him and he says, it's the answers to this question that divide us. It's the questions that unite us. It's the questions that unite us. Says Reb Nachman, Reb Nachman of Bresev and Lekut you heard today the Chazan of Musaf and the Geshrei Gegeben, and that's when I remember the Zvart. I remember the Zvart. Mishoros of Shoyal im Zelaza. What? Aye, me kaim kvoid. When I digeben a Geshrei, with the ganze chayas from the Gdisha Sien, Aye, me kaim kvoid. Tait Shreb Nachman, Shoyalim doesn't always mean ask. You know what Shoyalim means? They borrow. Meshars of Shoyalim Zelaza. And you know what they borrow from each other? The Hergish. As Aye Mekhaim Kvaitai. The question, Aye! That is where he is. The question, Aye! Where are you? Mekhaim Kvaitai. That's where he is. The question is sometimes bringing us to a place that's far deeper and far truer than the answer. To quote the Balatanya Lekutatoy in the Parshas Pekudai. I can't only do Breslov and Slonim, right? <laughs> Listen to what he says. It's the idea of Sachiyu, it's the idea of Sachlila. Quoting the Baron of Uch. Yidiyas Achiyu means I know who Hashem is. Yidiyas Hashlila means I don't know anything. I am a Kumkwait. Chvaisnish. Yidiyas Hashlila means I know Shlila. I don't know. Balatanya says Yidiyas Achiyu can relate to a Nakuda of Elakus that is very limited. Yidiyas Hashlila, that touches a far more truer place in God. What he calls Soiv of Kalaman, the infinite, the ain't Soiv. Aye, in the Aye, is sometimes the deepest Mekhaim Kvoyte. The question, we can't ruin by the answer. Some of you today were asking, why, 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 why? Well, certainly I'm not the one to give ever an answer to this. But all I could say is that sometimes the question, you touch Mekhaim Kvoyte. In a very deep place. The two brothers, the Heliket Rebbe of Zishan and Rebbe of Melech, were wandering in Golos. Somebody informed upon them to the police. They threw them into prison. There was no bathroom. There was a bucket in the corner for people's needs. So you can understand the matz of Hagashmi. Rebbe Melech wakes up in the morning. He's crying. Rebbe Zushan says, why are you crying? He says, I can't doubt it. The Reyachira, the terrible odor, of what it was filled with from the people, he couldn't die. The position says, so why are you crying? He says, the first time since I'm a, my child, I'm not davening. So the says, okay, so you won't daven. Why are you crying? Malik says, how can I start my day without davening? I need a daven. When I daven, I connect to my pnimiyas, to my neshama, to my etza. When I daven, I connect to the essence of life. To the core, to hey ho ilam im tsura then I can go on with the day. If I don't daven, I'm fragmented, I'm scattered, I'm alienated. There's no dvekas, I need dvekas with the MS, with the pnimiyas of life, with Hashem. The Psusha says, There's no dvekas? Really? There's no dvekas? The Zelbirim boy Nushalaylam who said you should daven says in Shulchan Aruch that if there's a reyachra, if there's a bad smell, you're not allowed to daven. Today, you won't daven. By not davening, you'll fulfill Ratzin Hashem. You'll fulfill Ratzin Hashem. That's the right 
Today you become Davuk in the Emmas, do not have any. Ah, the Bazusha, Gavalda Kavar. Instead of crying, he starts singing. Two chsidim in five minutes, they were dancing. This is the position of Melech, Kdoisha Yali. The Goyim see two Yidin dancing, they join. In ten minutes, he had some chastain and put him. The prison warden, the Shimer, he is Matan Celebedic. He walks in, Kazatskis. You could think he had a chasana. Doesn't like it, it's a prison. Calls over one of the Goyim, one of the Gentiles. He says, Why are they dancing? What's the dance? As usual, he says, The Jews are guilty. <laughs> or, <laughs> Who's guilty? Not the Jews. He says, Why are they dancing? What's there to dance? He says, I don't know. It's just deep things. He says, Tell me why they're dancing or I'll kill you. He points to the bucket in the court. <laughs> <laughs> they're dancing for that bucket? He says, Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the simcha, explain to me the simcha. He says, they said to us that as a result of that bucket, they developed a new type of relationship with God. <laughs> says, really? What do you mean? He says, they say there was a pre-bucket relationship and a post-bucket relationship. Before the bucket, that's one hashkaf in the relationship. Exactly, thank you. This is the Dasidas, Dasidas Raboy Sai. Raboy Sai, exactly. After the bucket, it's a whole new Ashkof Asylum. The prison warden says, Really? I'm gonna teach these miserable people a lesson. You know what he does? Picks up the bucket. It's for two hours, I'm throwing it out. Throws it out. Zusha turns to the Melech and says, Bring the Yetzkens to Davinen! My brother, now you can Davin. Chsidim explained a very deep part in the story. What the Zusha was telling the Melech is, Aye is oich mekayim kvaidai. You're always in a relationship. Sometimes the relationship is that you should Davin. And sometimes Hashem says, and He says, today the relationship is a different relationship. It's through not davening. But now is the relationship. Now I'm alive. Now I'm productive. Now I'm successful. Zakhtib Chaim Shmulevich, Zatzal, the Rosh Hashiva of Mir. Achsidish Avort. You'll soon see Achsidish Avort. I heard somebody say it over from Sikhis Musser. I told him you didn't have the void, you never learned Chsidis. If you would have learned, you would have had the void, you didn't have what he was saying. He thought it was some other Chalois. <laughs> Based on somebody says in Bris, there was a briskus, he was saying it was a pilpul in Gitten, in Hilchus Gitten. And he says, Wie versteh's du wegen dem, du bist doch ein Gorosh. He says, Ich bin nicht kein Gorosh, ich bin ein Gadosh. Okay, inside job. If you spent nine years in Bris, you'll get it. Here's a Bchaim Shmulevish, listen to this. He's so, he's so good. Good morning, Shabbos, Lamed Aleph. Rabbi Yossi says, if you demolish a building on Shabbos, you take off a brick on Shabbos, you're only liable in If you're taking off the brick to make renovation in this place, you're going to rebuild it in this place. If not, you're not chayv. Frag the Gemara. All the malachas of Shabbos we learned from the Mishkan. When they took apart the Mishkan, they would rebuild it in the same place? No. They would go somewhere else and rebuild it. So why you chayev on Shabbos only if you rebuild it in the same place? The Mishkan you brought somewhere else. Zog the Gemara, I quote, Kivon dal pi Hashem yisu val pi Hashem yachanu kimekoy moidomi Because they were traveling based on GPS, God's positioning system. So therefore it's kimekoy moidomi, it's like they're in the same place. 
ask Rabbeinu Hanano and all the everyone why just because Hashem is telling me go go from Stanford Connecticut to Muncie to Williamsburg so it's Kimakaimai dummy why is it Kimakaimai they went 42 Masai it's not Kimakaimai it's another place Hashem says go from here to there why is it Kimakaimai Zakhrib Chaim Shmulevish open your hearts so the match, I'm going to give my illustration. You decide, you're taking your wife, it was such a gewaldic Shabbos, you're taking your wife away for four days, and because you have an imagination, too much, so it's not just a trip to where she wants. It's a trip, Mamish Kola Oilam Kula, says Abchaim Shmulevich. Mamish Kola Oilam Kula. So you go, you go, from here you go to Los Angeles, from Los Angeles you go to Chicago, from Chicago you go to Honolulu, from Honolulu you go to London, from London, to Moscow, from Moscow, to Tel Aviv, from Tel Aviv you go to Sydney, Australia, then to New Zealand, and then you come back to JFK Airport, JFK, just for the Kiddush. <laughs> Every place, a behola, the luggage, passport control, Customs, taxis, hotels, pack, unpack, unpack, unpack. This flight is delayed. It's Bill Bulayoitzis, but they can you travel the world and you need passport, you show you where you. Here's the Chaim Shmulevich, he says, a dogma will be Michael, but I want to illustrate, you should understand. He says, what happens if this is a couple and the Rebbeinah Shalom bless them with a baby and they take the baby on all these trips? And you look to the baby and you ask the baby, where were you for the last week? Where were you? Hawaii, London, Paris, Tel Aviv, Moscow, Sydney, New Zealand, JFK, Los Angeles. If it could speak, you know what it's going to tell you? I was in one place. I was in my mother's arms. My mother went everywhere. Christless where she went. Lines, luggage, passports, taxis, hotels, delays. Slept in the airports, Bahalus. They call it vacation in America. Like <laughs> my vacation. <laughs> my man's vacation, my couch, my bed, my safer. You asked the baby, where were you? I was in my mother's arms. Kivanda al piyashem yisu al piyashem yachanu kimekoi moidomi. They went all over the place, but they felt they were in the Shekhinah's arms, they were in their mother's arms. They were in the same place. How do you live with now? Living with now doesn't mean my life is perfect and it's boring. You're going to a doctor, you're coming from a doctor. Here's a treatment, here's another treatment. This worked, this didn't work. It's a roller coaster. I was giving this lecture a a few weeks ago. Why is my life a roller coaster? I meet a yid in the street, says, Rabbi, ich kim nicht. I'm not coming. I say, why not? Why not? It's a chitzpah, your title. So what's wrong? He says, my life is not a roller coaster, it's straight down. <laughs> <laughs> Living with the now doesn't mean I look in front of the mirror and I say, hey, we think it's perfect. Life is a roller coaster. But you know what? I'm going up. I'm going down. So that I'm going straight down, at least I'm feeling. I'm in my mother's arms. I'm always in the same place. Of course I'm not in the same place. Of course there's moments of confidence and moments of suffering. Moments of Yush and moments of Aye. Up and down, right and left. And sometimes you're twirling around, you feel like you're no washing machine, him with a cave, a kafa, kill, ultimate lamaza. And then at the right moment, somebody in shul makes mummers the right comment, you know, the knife put it in and then twirl it ten times. <laughs> and he tells you, Kave el Hashem. He's like, Where's Kushna? <laughs> He's eating a chalapta. You know what a chalapta is? 
The lid truck's not what I call it. You'll never know. It's a stuffed cabbage, or the Irish to ice it, and Hungarian Jews think it's good. They call it Einig Yomtev. Why beats me? Ich weid mach ad He's eating a chalupta. The liquid is re-reading from this. Emin em betachin. Emin em betachin. You have to be in your mother's arms. You're always in your mother's arms. Kimekoy my dummy. That's how I can have stability in life. My life is not the same. Kulon shavim letoyeva by Sarah doesn't mean she was always in the same place. She was kidnapped. For 90 years she waited. Shavim? Kulon shavim letoyeva? What, Sarah got married at the age of 17? At the age of 19 she had three kids? At the age of 32 she became a baba? I saw an interview with a Satma lady from Williamsburg. Some newspaper interviewed her. They asked her, so they came to visit her, so she was, you know, committing uh, Moyes, preparing for Shabbos. They say, are you ever jealous of women in Manhattan? She says, what? They say, she wakes up 8 o'clock in the morning, she gets dressed, she has a suitcase, an attaché case, she's a judge. You're at home here, preparing for Shabbos. Feminism. I'm jealous. I'm jealous. What does that lady have? She's a judge. Everybody's fighting with her. He says, you come here tomorrow night. She says, Friday night. 60 grandchildren worshipping me. <laughs> Sonny Menu had that? What's Kulam Shavim Latayva? Kulam Shavim, really Shavim? For 90 years, she didn't have a life. Shavim Latayva? Of course it wasn't Shavim. It was Kulam Shavim Latayva. They were Shavim in the Nekud of Dveikas. They weren't Shavim, it was the same. Shavim in the Nekud of Toiva. She was always in the moment knowing my mother may be going down a roller coaster. My father may be going down, but I'm in their arms. Sometimes he tells me the Dveikas is through not davening. It's a different type of Dveikas. I don't know what type of Dveikas it is. I am a Kankvoida. Maybe he's an Aye. Point three, Shalom Bias. This I'm going to say, but Kitz and Nimrit, everybody here is very intelligent, much more than I am. You'll get it right away, especially the Ezra Snoshin. Here's the facts. These experiences in life can destroy a marriage or they, they, they can create the deepest marriage possible. In life, sometimes we don't have choices. In this situation, Shalom bias is always critical. Without Shalom bias, a home is a terrible place to be. If there's no trust in the home, if there's no positive energy in the home, there's no Shekhinah Shruya, it's not a bad place you want to be. There's Yidin who stay in the base Medrash, Ad Chatzoy Salayla. People think their mom is Mahada to be at all the Shiurim. Ich weiß doch, they don't want to go home. Somebody once asked me, the Gemara says, Yaakov Tikkin Tfilis Arvis. Why did Yaakov do Maidav? Maidav is the first Tfilis, should have been Avram. I said, Poshet. Yaakov came home. You know what Leah told him? Reuven has a virus. Shimon has an earache. <laughs> Levi has an infection. Yehuda terrorizes the whole house. You give Yisachar a bath. He hasn't had a bath in three weeks. Yaakov would like a shrey yebin. Maidiv, maidiv, maidiv. Yaakov, of course. I would also be Masak and Phyllis Argus. The best thing that ever happened to many people. A shreit maidiv. Let's face it. Many people in this room don't have that. You see each other day in and day out, and there's no smoke screens. You can't say this, there's so many distractions in life. And the way a couple can either build their relationship, or chas v'shalom, the opposite, is very, very sensitive. 
But in these situations, I know from the little experience I have, the agmas nefesh, the stress, the pain, the tears, nobody else knows about it. Even this Shabbos, many of you, you compose yourself. You're for it, you're about to But you know, you know, Hashem Shima Bikoili. Says the Balatanya, not Hashem Shima Likoili. Hashem Shima Bikoili. Likoili means listen to my voice. Bikoili is listen what's in my voice. We can listen to what people are saying. We have to hear what people are not saying. Shima Bikoili. Only you know the Bikoili. And when you connect, you can either, either an experience like this can tear a couple apart. They get upset at each other. You don't understand me. You're not here for me. You have your friend. You run away. You go to work. You have this. You have that. You have that. What about me? I have to go through this. I can't speak. I take my shoes off my feet. But I also know the opposite. And that is that there are couples that created the deepest dvekas. That they're mummish carrying each other together. How do you do that? One word. Non-stop honest communication. Communication, communication. You have to giggle together, cry together, but together. This doesn't mean you don't have disagreements. This doesn't mean you don't get into bad moods. This doesn't mean you don't have issues you have to work out. Oh, you came to our love. I want to get. Now. Very well dished. The Chacham of America. I will I get. I saw you in the man the other day learning Masech the Gid. He was an Amma Aritz Minat. He never opened the Gemara in his life. I say, what's up? He says, Neshama Param Svasayim. Of course, listen, a man and a woman, Sinish Poshut, in the best of situations, we know that. There's a reason that in the secular world is 50, 60 percent, Rechman al divorce. A, a woman comes up, she wants a get. He says, Gemari Gitten, Daft Sadi, Kalam Ekadish, Ishti, Yashayim, and Mizbayach, Moira, the love the most, the Mizbayach cries. She says, 30 years, I'm crying. Let the Mizbeach cry. <laughs> I asked the guy, how's Shalom Bias? He says, we got engaged. She thought I was mummish Rebekah So she let me doing all the talking. And she did the listening. We got married. She decided I'm not mummish Rebekah So she started to do all the talking. And I started to do all the listening. I say, Moshe, now. He says, now 12 years later, we both do all of the talking and the neighbors do all of the listening. <laughs> that is going to be Chilukadeus, of course. The husband says, you know, I'm sick and tired of going to this guy. I'm not looking at his face again. But the wife likes it. There's going to be Chilukadeus, normal, normal. But communicate. You have to connect, you have to look into the eyes, you have to be there for each other, you have to empathize, you have to validate. Don't judge, validate. Because you need each other. You can't do this on your own. You're on a journey together. Other people, everyone needs it, but other people can get away with it. For a while, they could make distractions. He's running here, my life here, everything is busyness. Again, don't be part of the circle. You have to know where your food is. The relationship between a husband and a wife in this situation is pivotal. One can't even describe how pivotal it is. And it's difficult. Men suffer silently. Women suffer also silently, but also not silently. Men and women are two creatures. A guy comes to me, Mechitza, disgusting. I say, really, which book on relationships do you like? He says, men are from Mars, women are from Venus. I says, you know, the separation between Mars and Venus is millions of miles more than the Mechitza. But that's good for you. That's good for you. It's different creatures, different people. Here's the say that. A man comes home from work, not everybody, most of them. You ask him, how was your day? Men don't like talking about their day. We have a philosophy. 
It was hard enough being in the day. Have to talk about it too. That's our philosophy. You know, once is enough. I'm not gonna now go make chazunas hashir. This guy did this, he said this, he said this, I thought this, so he said this, I went this, so he said this, so I sent the text, he said this, so he said this. A woman has an opposite philosophy. I had a day, Chazur HaSashir. Rav Ibn Chaz, Abinish Aymol. What's Aymol Chazur? L'chol HaPochest Naimol. Once with your sister, second time with the other sister, Third time with your mother. Fourth time with yourself. Fifth time you try your husband, he falls asleep. After nine times and each time you laugh and you cry, you laugh and you cry. Now, ah, now you can start your night. We have a different philosophy. What should I tell you? We like talking about iPhones. iPhones, sushi. We're not complicated. We don't like talking about it was a stressful day. I don't know what stress is enough. I had stress. Leave me alone. It's good when you laugh about it, but you have to learn this. You have to learn this. I always say, I'll pick Kabbalah. Men are waffles, women are spaghetti. Waffles, you know what waffles are? Each waffle? Is a meribe befneyat It's a square spaghetti. Yet the hit. Every strand is interconnected. I put in the cut with hundreds of pastors. Singing connected to fit and for your design. That's how it is. Our brain is divided into filing cabinets, folders. We have a folder called the car. A folder called the house. A folder called the schwiger. Folder called the wife. Folder called the job. Folder called sheer. Folder called Yiddishkeit. Everything. If there's a problem in the house, we go to our filing cabinet, we take it out, we make sure not to touch any other folder, we take it out, we look at it. Usually we don't do anything. Sometimes we deal with it, we put it back. And in the middle, we have a big folder in our brain, which most of the way it says nothing. <laughs> and we love hanging out there. You ask your husband, how are you feeling today? What are you feeling from what Reverend Jacobson said? Nothing. <laughs> you think he's lying. You come to me after, he doesn't communicate. He communicates, we feel nothing. We love hanging out in that place called nothing. In fact, if we wouldn't have to bring on Panosa, we would stay there a little bit long There's no answer that makes a woman as mashuga as telling her nothing. You know why? Because their brain is like the World Wide Web. Before they ask her it. It's spaghetti, everything is out. We mean nothing. Her heart is alive, chai v'chai, 24 hours a day, and everything is connected. Life is one mitzis, achdus. So you come home from the Shabbaton tomorrow night, you tell your wife, no, what's on your mind? You sit down on the couch, wow, she's so happy. She starts talking. The first eight seconds she discusses the dress that the cleaners ruined. You take out your folder, cleaners, dress, Shabbos good. 20 seconds, she discusses leak in the house. 35 seconds, she doesn't like her job. 45 seconds, issue with her sister-in-law. It's now a minute and a half. She already dealt with 30 subjects. You're opening and closing finally. <laughs> cleaners to the house, to the job, the shvigib, a mitzvah, shavah, bruchas, chasim, rosh hashanah, yin kippah, sickness. Cleaning help, whatever it is, celebrity confrey. This doctor, that everything has a different file. So you're going like this and see that. And you're looking at her, but in your brain she doesn't realize that your mum is doing bizayas apecha. It's now three minutes, she covered 250 subjects, and she's just beginning. And you're schlepping back and forth, back and forth, and, and you're about your, mom, your brain is about to, his brain is rubbish about to explode. You can't. How many folders can you open within two minutes? 
the natural thing for you to do at that moment is kill yourself. <laughs> the problem is, the problem is, you love your wife too much. So not, you don't want to make an almana, she has enough tzadahs. So you do the second best option. You fall asleep. You see him falling asleep, what do you think? He's such a narcissist. He's so selfish. I thought this Shabbaton made him a bissel amensh. He's sleeping on me. Little do you know the reason he's sleeping and snoring is because of the Avarab. The Avagdoila that he asked his wife because the only other option was suicide. <laughs> If you can always laugh about this like you're laughing now, that's how you create a, a happy home. That's yet we have to be able to laugh from each other, with each other, respect our differences, be able to laugh at our differences, but learn to trust each other. Trust, communication, is the key. No, Sholem Bayez doesn't solve all the issues here. We know that. But it's a different mahalach. When it's Sholem Bayez, it's a different mahalach. And then, my dear friends, we spoke about individuality, knowing your food outside of the circle and respecting it. The Kotzke Rebbe's Vart is always the best Vart in the world. You all know it. Some of you know it. That's my Hesaf. You understand? Don't worry, I also didn't understand. <laughs> If I am I because you are you and you are you because I am I, I am not I and you are not you. But if I am I because I am I and you are you because you are you, then I am I and you are you. <laughs> and now we can have a relationship. <laughs> Let me tell you what I'm going This is true about every person. But in, in the situation of many people in this room, it's pikuach nefesh. Don't define your you by somebody else's you. Ever. Ever, you're not allowed to respect gvulais chalak hakadosh baruch hu This works for you, and you have to be able to tell your sister, your shviger, your brother, your father, your nephew, your niece, the closest people that you love, the love. Thank you, but this is not for me. Why? Why? You gonna have so much fun? You're gonna drink latte. You have to know. Thank you. Cordial, respectful, but gvulos. Gvulos. And let's face it, in the Chredesha world, boundaries don't come easy. It's a beautiful thing, but sometimes it's not good. I'm the Yisei in Shuvas. I'm parts of Fei in Shuvas. That's also part of Kedusha. Gvulois cholok hakadosh baruch hu moishet told koyach. There's koyanim, there's levim, there's Israelim, there's men, there's women, there's me, there's you. There's moments of oneness and there's moments of individuality. It's not so easy for all of us. Guy says, "Come, you're not going to show up to Vachnacht. You're not his friend anymore. You know what? You have to know who's a real friend." And who's an acquaintance? Not everybody is your best friend in the world. Doesn't say that everybody is my best friend. I'm nice to everybody. I respect everybody. I'm cordial to everybody. Not everybody is my confidant. You know what a confidant is? Not everybody is my best friend. Not everybody. I have to have boundaries. It's so important. You can't go to a place and then you don't know how to leave. A roof once asked me, he says, how do you do it? I told him you have to learn one chush. You have to learn how to be by a simcha for four minutes. 
And he says, how, how? I say, you walk in, head table, yeah. you look at the chassan in the eyes, don't take out your phone. You look the chassan in the eyes, you give him the warmest brach in the world, Be'emes! You go to the father, you go to this, give him, give him four minutes, but real, real, with the gun sides. But you know what, if I stay there till three o'clock in the morning, I come home, I'm not a person anymore. I can't be here for my wife, I can't be here for my neshama, I can't be here for myself, I can't be here for God, I can't be here for anybody else I have to be here in my life. Avos Yisrael doesn't mean Hefkeis. Avos Yisrael doesn't mean no boundaries. Number two, life happens now. We don't cope now, we thrive now. Rabbi Yochanan Rishlokish. I'm a chadish betuva, he says the Baal Shem Tov, b'chol rega v'rega. Now. Rabbi Zushin Rabbi Limelech, Rabbi Chaim Shmulevich. Now I'm in the hands. Kulam shalom l'tayv. Number three, the need for shalom, for real communication. And finally, there's one minute that I want to share with you. The Maisa, the Maisa, I saw it many years ago. It touched me so deeply. It tells the story of life. There was a boy, a 10 year old boy, who was in a car accident. He lost his left arm. It was such a pity on him, you know, 10 years old, whole life changes. His parents, needed something to give him an outlet for dignity. For them. They found a Japanese master of martial arts to teach him a very known form of martial arts from Japan known as Judo. It's a very sophisticated form of fighting. And it takes a lot of seichel and skill and wisdom. And this Japanese master says he could be matzliach without one arm. And he goes for training. Months and months and months, he's teaching him one move. After three months, four months, he turns his master. <laughs> the same move before Malchazor Sashir. He looks at him and he says, This is the only move you're going to need to know in your life. Perfect it. Two years, perfect it. Discipline. The Japanese have discipline. And then he says, the day is coming, you're going to get into the ring, the competition is going to begin. And remember, the person you're fighting has two arms. Remember, fight, fight well. <coughs> it's a competition. He's a kid with two arms. He's a kid with one arm. Beats him up. He's bleeding, he's wounded, he falls. And the Japanese, go back, go back. The referee comes to the master and says, Abrahmanis. Well, now you say Abrahmanis in Japan. What are you doing to this kid? He's not made to fight. The master says, no, no, go back, go back. It's already late in the day. And the poor kid is bruised up. He says, you continue. His opponent He's also trained and skilled and has two arms. But he's so confident. He's so confident. He makes a mistake. He relaxes. <laughs> he relaxes. That moment, the boy without the arm sees he could make that move. That move he could make. He makes that move and he knocks his opponent out. He wins. He wins. Obviously, he feels like a billion dollars parents, such a special moment. He's on the way home. He turns to the Japanese master. And says, Teach me, my master. How did I win? How does a boy with one arm win against a boy with two arms? He looked at him and he said, I was teaching you for two years one move. You know why I was teaching you that one move? Because the only knowing defense that your opponent 
has against that move is grabbing your left arm. And that's why I knew you're going to win. Because there's no defense against it. I read the story and I thought to myself, Isn't this what all of Yiddishkeit is about? We look at our lives, and most of us say our whole lives, Shamnu Bagadnu Gazalnu Chatisi Avisi Pashati. I'm missing this, I'm missing that, I'm missing that. Bishoygig, Bemaizig, Bedidbu, Bemaisig, Gilgul Zel, Gilgul Ache. Tzad I'm a bad apple. Especially when I look at other experiences in my life. We have very few answers in life. I am a good mind. But here is a perspective that this master understood. What sometimes a person could look at his life and see, it's the biggest chisarin, it's the biggest korban. But somehow that's the story that gives him his greatest ability and shlichis of nitzachim. So I got up in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and I said this before Yom Kippur to a tzivur of hundreds of Jews, most of them secular Jews, and the title was Forgiving Yourself, Forgiving Others, and Forgiving Hashem. And I spoke about this. And I said... Look at your life and look at all the things that you're missing. And instead of telling yourself how bad, this allows you to do a move that brings you to the place you have to be in this world. I don't know what that place is, trust me. But I know, don't be a victim because you're missing that. You can do, make a move that nobody else in the world can make. Why he was chosen, Chvaisnish. But I know you can make a move that nobody else could make. That's why you were created. I finished my drasha. The oilam uh, gives applause. I'm feeling good. I walk down. I'm walking by. They don't say shekayach. I walk by the front row. There's a bochero, a teenager, a young boy sitting in front of me, missing his left arm. Oh my God Almighty! I went to my filing cabinet. Come on. You know, I was loose with my words. I didn't really. I right away went over to him and I said, I want to apologize to you. I may have said something that was insensitive. I didn't know you're in the crowd. If I said something that was disrespectful or insensitive to what you go through, I apologize. I thought I was giving a mushal. Lapoil, <laughs> there was a nimshal. He looks at me and says, Rabbi, why are you apologizing? I do judo. <laughs> like really? I turned to the Rav who invited me. I said, "Listen to me. Put this kid up now. Let him tell his story. Let him tell his story." He asked me. He gets up to tell a story. The Oilam thought it was a rehearsal for three months. You know what I mean? And when I said not, huh, he's not a faker too. I couldn't win that one. But he gets up. A long story, I'm going to tell you one I could. It's a bacher, yeshiva bacher. He struggled a lot. He went his own path. He went his own path. Hearts from gold. 
special kid, bright, Yefei Toya, Yefei Mara, went there to Israel, a Hamas missile, a Hamas missile from Gaza blew off his left arm. He was in the hospital for months. Went home in Israel, just so depressed. He, he was handsome, powerful, he was a fighter. He was very athletic. This was his chush. He was an athletic kid. Without an arm. There's no life. He was in his apartment for months. He didn't go out. Terrible decon, terrible money. A young kid, 18, 19, was just almost a young, innocent kid. And he already, you know, he, he, had, he, had, he had difficult experiences already in his life. He's saying this barabin publicly. A friend comes into him one day and says, Izzy, we're going outside. You need to see the ear. He says, I'm not going anywhere. It's a beautiful day. So I'm going to take you to a private beach. Just get your feet wet. Look at the sun. Look at the sky. Look at the water. You have to see the world. You can't lock yourself up for the rest of your life, Mother Shekhar. He forces him out of bed, takes him in a car, takes him to a private beach. It's a beautiful day. He says he's sitting. Can't swim. He's a professional swimmer. Can't swim. It's one arm. But he's right near the water. You know, it's very it's a beautiful, beautiful day. Suddenly, he sees deep in the ocean a hand, a hand shaking. He sees somebody's going down. He's himself at the beach. His chave went to a pub. He's like, went to a... A kretschner. A kretschner. A kretschner. An inn. He's at zweite lechayim. He was, you know, whatever. He was drinking coffee, beer, my... I don't know what he was saying, lechayim. Up on the hill. He's alone. One arm. And this person is with a hand up. He sees, I'm the trinktzich. What do you do? He knew it's a mice of seconds. See, so he screams on top of his lungs to his friend, come to the beach, or in uh, whatever language. And he decides he's going. He jumps into the water. He starts swimming with one arm. He reaches the person, and he feels the current, what's it called, the undercurrent. The Mayim Rabin. And he understands the person, and he hops the person. His friend heard him. So his friend comes running down. He's holding this person <coughs> with one arm, obviously. His friend is a good swimmer with two arms, comes running to help the matzev. The tide schleps away his friend. So now he needs to save two people with one arm. He tells us, he says, this is what I did. I dive down, I jump down, I put both of my feet in the sand, but I was underwater. I lifted up my one arm like a tree, and both people were holding on to my arm, but I was underwater. Now I'm thinking, how long can I be underwater? 10 seconds, 15 seconds, 20 seconds. If I stay underwater, I die, but Mela, they both die. If I leave them, I go back, two people die. If I go back up, it could be all three die. What do you do? He's thinking. It's 10 seconds. He's soon gonna, he won't be able to breathe anymore. But if he comes up, he can't hold him. He's now like a tree. But not for long. As long as it's up. Not if he's dead. And he tells us, he's like after 12 seconds, the current receded, it relaxed. So the, 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 the height of the wave receded, it went down. So he could for a second pick up his mouth and get a little ear, then he goes back down. But it already became bearable, he can go up and down for ear. And then after a few minutes, it relaxed and he saved everybody. Comes back. He says, I came home and I said to myself, there's people who live their whole life, Baruch Hashem with two arms, but they can't say they saved Mamish two Yidin Mimavis Lachayim. I did through swimming. This means my life is not purposeless. 
My life still has a bright future. And he mumbish, he got his life together. He now trains, he trains people missing an arm. He's one of the first people in the history of Eretz Yisrael to train people with one arm to be able to function, to be able to protect themselves, to be able to fight over the enemy. And he has a whole career, he's a chasha, he became oh, fascinating, this little bachel. He's telling the story after I told the story about Judah. <laughs> Went over to him, I gave him a hug. I told him, Izzy, I was feeling so guilty that I told that mice. I felt it was so insensitive. It's like, Mamisha Michshel, you know, you say the wrong thing. But I, Mamish, I want to thank you. You know, what it did, what it did for all of us. <clears throat> what it did for all of us. So I was invited to speak in a crazy place. Probably not many of you are familiar with what Sufism is. Sufism, is, Sufism you're going to laugh, it's the Kabbalah of Islam. The Islamic religion has Mekobolim. Besides Mekobolim, they're busy with mysticism. It's called Sufis. There's a Sufi bookstore in Lower Manhattan. They asked me, a Yiddish maid works there. She knows me, she calls me. She says, could you come speak to the people here? First time I got invited to speak to Muslim Mikobola. <laughs> so I brush up on my Quran from the yeshiva days. <laughs> what am I going to speak to Muslims? What am I going to talk? Parshas Aikiv? Anoyim Ali Malach? What am I going to talk? So I get my little training in the basics, and I thought, you know what? Maybe the grace of Chachem Jacobson is going to knock some sense into the Muslims, and I'll change the whole world. <laughs> of course, Iran, Afghanistan, Iraq, India, Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, Obama, Netanyahu, Kerry, Mustafa, Zay, I'll change them. I prepared. It was a hard Russia to prepare for. First I I couldn't take out a pesach some sefer, or another sefer, but how far time I wasn't working. I mamish had to work here in Chalayim. I come Thursday night, well, Shishi, to Chichabura, Sufi bookstore, 200 people. I look, so I'll see you. I see on the nose, but that the Glaich. that the Glaich? I see the weight, the nose, the matz of the Mahalach. I understood the matz of Jews are so thirsty for Ruchnis. They go to Buddhism, they go to Hinduism, they go to Sufism. I'm like, I'm going to talk to 200 Jews about Islam. She wants me to talk about Sufis. I press delete in my brain. I take out one of the old files. Good old Judaism. I'll call it Sufism. They know the difference. Energy. I'm going to talk about energy. Oneness. Cosmos. Integration. Healing. Awareness, mindfulness, they'll know what it is. The Yiddish Shekinda, I'm going to talk to them about Islam. As though I'm the expert on Islam. I sit down with them, say, I'm going to teach you the depth of Sufism tonight. I give them a geschmacker mind with Hasidus in a good English. I wanted to say something else, whatever. They loved it. Spoke about relationships, meditation, God, ego, truth, honesty, all the good things. At the end, I tell them, you want to keep a contact? Yeah. I say, I send out, Mr. Mshab is going to the weekly email in English, on my email, on, on the Machshav of Yiddishkeit. If you want, you give me your email, I'll send it to you. Shai. They give me. I do it wherever I go. I usually do it if it's not Shabbos, Yom Tov. Three weeks later, three weeks later, I'm sitting Thursday night. Nothing comes to my mind. People rely on it. Some people use it for drushas. Nothing comes to my mind. I believe in the Klal of Babakama. Goyen of Menagan of Potter. You know what? I'm not coming up with something new. 
Look, I can also use old stuff. Say, gavin and for me, can I gavin? I take an old mice that I had in my computer. Ich with the parsha. It had to do with the parsha, like turtles with New Zealand. It was four in the morning. I didn't have koyach. I was frustrated. I pressed send, and I went to sleep. I have to say, I felt empty. It was the first time I didn't produce. It's echte material, YYJ, good material. It was zugehakt. Weiss dich mamish, fachepet am meise with the parish, it was parish, parish of schmoz. But you know what, I was too tired. I don't always have to be on. You'll let it be off. I'll deal with it in therapy. I went to sleep. <laughs> the next Thursday night, the middle of the night, I'm sitting by the computer. And it's like, nice, nice essay coming out. I'm almost done. This is the old days of AOL, Zechreinel of Rochi. Remember AOL America Online? When you used to get an email, you got mail. You got mail. It's, it's the middle of the night. I'm finishing. You got mail. I want to see who's sending me emails. Lefnois Boyke. I open it up. A woman, I met you in the Sufi bookstore. I gave you my email. Since then, I've been reading it last few weeks. I love it very much. She tells me her whole mice. She grew up in New York. Ayida Shemedua went through different experiences. I'm not going to be Mayrich Mitnei Sibis. And she completely left. She became a Zen Buddhist. You know what a Zen Buddhist is? It's not a yeshiva name. Let's put it that way. It's one of the far eastern disciplines, which entails a lot of things, could entail things about where there's a lot of but it could. But it's very spiritual, very very spiritual. A lot of meditation, etc. She became, her, 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 her therapist is a Zen Buddhist. Her uncle called her up that day, she's writing. The only person in the family she has a relationship with, because the family is to shit it, her uncle. He was diagnosed with a terminal illness, and he doesn't have hope. A little while before, her only relationship she had with somebody, it's a brach. She says, my life was completely broken. Completely broken. I went to my therapist, came home. And she's telling me what she was thinking about her future. It was very, very sad what she was thinking. She said, it's the middle of the night, I'm crying. And I, first time in years, I turned to God and I said, in our words, Kaylee, Kaylee, Lama Zavtan. Why do you abandon me? As I'm crying, she tells me it's four in the morning, and suddenly, you've got mail. Who's sending me four in the morning? I see Rabbi Y. Y. Jacobson. What does the rabbi say? I open it up. I see. You write. This was that email. I want to share with you a story about the Baal Shem Tov. Which story did I send, that I find and sent out? I made a tzut shepanish with the parasha. It's before the Shoshana, a few weeks. Baal Shem Tov calls him the Halakin at Wolf Kitzis. And he says, you're going to blow the shoifer up a great zechtzu, all the kavonas. Vov kitzes, he vov kitzes, chosei yagin lain, it appears. Kavonas, nariza, rasha, mamish, he prepares for weeks, and he takes notes. So he can prepare, he can remember. Comes Rosh Hashanah at Kiyas, by the helikah Baal Shem Tov, a measure bush. Comes this man of Kiyas, a great machta, and the eibish to It's the holiest moment of the year, being in Amalchus. He can't find his notes. He can't find his kavon. You know what happens? You go blank. You get confused. He gets up. Baal Shem Tov is waiting. He's blank. Those of you who do public speaking, you know, you don't have your notes. You get up. Uh, uh, you want the earth should swallow you up. <laughs> he doesn't have his kavonis. He's so blank. He can't find it anywhere. So what does he do? He has no breda. He takes the shoifer. He makes the bracha. <laughs> And he blows me a push it, it's a brach in the heat. He feels that he let down the tzaddik, you saw it, 
that on him stands the world, the Helech of Hashem, who entrusted him with the greatest moment of Kiyos Shoifah to be Machter Hashem, which really decides the whole Matzav of the year. He so to brach. At the end of Davini, the Baal Shem Tov walks over to his town. Says, Wolf, ah! In heaven there's many, many chambers. Many heicholos. Many chambers. Every heichel has a key. A different key. There's one master key for all the heicholos. A master key for all the chambers. What? Says the Baal Shem Tov, a humble heart. A humble heart, a real humble heart, no ego, no yeshes, a tzabroch in our hearts, it's the master key. Reb Wolf, today you gave us the master key, you opened up every eichel, gave him back his nisham. This was the story I wrote. She writes to me, she says it's four in the morning, she was thinking the worst. God, why did you abandon me? All I have is... Humility, brokenness. And suddenly I read the word from the Baal This is the deepest relationship. It's the master key. Aye, Mekoy Kvoida. In the Aye, that's where Mekoy Kvoida is. This is the moment. Why, what, when, I don't know, but this is the moment. You gave me back my life. I'm looking, I'm reading. I start trembling. She signs her name. She signs her first name. And then she signs her last name. Kitsis. Then she writes, P.S. P.S. I grew up in a home. My grandparents were old people. They were there. My baba, my grandmother told me that we're ninth generation of a holy Jew whose name was Rabbi Wolf Kitsis. K-I-T-Z-E-S. I asked my grandmother, who is this Jew? She wasn't in a Frum family. She said, I don't know, but it was a very, very holy Jew. If you ever need anything, you turn to your grandfather and you ask him to get from God what you need. She says, I forgot about it. Suddenly, in my lowest moment, I see a message that the Baal Shem Tov sent to the Wolf Kitsis. Obviously, my Zayda chose you, Rabbi Jacobson, to give me the story, the vart he heard from the Baal Shem Tov, to save and pick up my life. And then she writes to me, I don't know how much brilliance and preparation it took from you. <laughs> <laughs> we did you have the insight? Did you have Kodesh? The Chachma Shleimah to do this. The Chachma Shleimah. I'm reading it. I was crying. And I'm thinking to myself. It's only because there was no wisdom. I was just a Shliach. I was a conduit. There was no, I wasn't even there. I hated what I did. That's why it was a miracle. I couldn't disturb it. I couldn't be, I couldn't be a Michshel. My ego wasn't there. If I cared, I was frustrated. I was annoyed. I had no satisfaction from the email. When you're not there, God makes miracles for you. And she thanks me for being the shliach of Zayd. And from this I learned, from this I learned one thing. I learned a lot of things. But one thing I learned. We never know somebody's path. And sometimes the most humble heart and the missing arm becomes the greatest, greatest Nitzachim, the greatest Dvekas, the greatest springboard for the deepest things. I am very afraid to say this, but he told it to me today from one of the people here, so I could chaser it over. And he says, did you ever think about the fact that many of the G'dayli Yisrael that Hashem put in this world after the Churban to rebuild the Jewish people from all different streams where people who their whole life had the pain that was never rectified and did not see for themselves a future. One by one, it was the Chazonish, 
the Satmerov, the Baisisro, the Lubavitcher Rebbe, they didn't suffer. What did they do? They took their lives and they became the greatest Oyhave Yisro. They took all the love that they wanted to have and they gave it to every Yiddish kid. The Kloisenberger Rebbe's Chusse Yogan Alaini was taken to Auschwitz, Erev Shavuos Tovshin Dalit. A wife and 11 children perished. He was liberated, Yud Zayaniyah Tovshin That Erev Yom Kippi was in the DP camps. I heard this from his nephew. Your Pfeiffer Mashinsky. A girl comes into him, says, Rebbe, I'm a Yesayma, Erev Yom Kippur. Who's going to bless me? Poizenberg Rebbe says, Ichel the bench. Puts his hands over this little girl. And he blesses her like a father blesses a daughter. She comes out, she's so happy. She tells the other Yesaymas, 80, 80 Yesaymas. He sat, blessed each one, kissed them, hugged them, embraced them. He lost 11 children, he had nothing. This is before he, he rebuilt his family, anything. What did he have to have? He didn't bless them as a, he didn't bless the Chas Shalom as a fake, nice guy. He took it all and he gave it to these kids. I know myself, I grew up in Crown Heights. Baba Chirebi used to get 700 letters a day. He didn't let his secretaries open the envelopes. You know why? They shouldn't read the letters. You ever opened 700 letters a day? A day? So one of the chassidim I know, his name is Chanan, bought him an envelope opener. You know what an envelope opener? Truch! He gives it back. He says, it's a machzufel kailas. Makes noise. So he goes to Sony. You have a silent one? It's gone. For extra money, we could find it. Pays a hamoina. He gets a silent envelope on it. He gives it in to Lubavitcher Rebbe. He gives it back. <laughs> this is already this. So I guess the Rebbe, he tells his secretary, he just passed away, Klein, a Benjamin Klein. I'll tell you what he told me. Listen to this. He said, different Yidin write me letters. How do they close, how do they seal their envelopes? You know how they seal their envelopes? Some people seal their envelopes with tape. Some people seal their envelopes with saliva, with roik. Some people with staples. Some people with glue. Abesedoi Yidin was famachin zeira converted mitreden. There are Jews who seal their envelopes with tears. How can I close, open with a machine, electric machine, or I eat close with this? I do it with my finger. I can take in the tears. I'm sure he had terrible pain. He took it, I think, just like the other G'dayli Yisrael. And he became one of the greatest ambassadors of love, light, and hope. For, for, for millions in Yiddish kinder. For millions in Yiddish kinder. Not one person sat shiva for him after his estalkos. Not one person. You think it wasn't sad? But you know what? 30 million Jews sat shiva for him also. 30 million kinder sat shiva. I want to finish with this. It taught me such a lesson. Sayyid Abel Zechoset. Abel Zechoset. Rav Maizlish said today about the Satmir of Zechoset and his yard site is this week. Chavov of, I think, 36 yard site. Lamates. And he shared about that experience as well. So somebody told me it's a fascinating thing. Anyways, a in Antwerp in Antwerp. His name is Rav Feivel Shapiro. He said the story so I could say his name. Abel Zechos in the classic about finding the Yid came for business to New York. You come from Antwerp to New York for business. Kemenek Am Shei Shlomayini. He chaps a minche He needs him. He's in Brooklyn. He chaps in 770 Eastern Parkway. He sees there's a commotion. What's the commotion? 
Yechidus, people are going into the bathroom. So he goes to the groan of the secretary. He says, I'm flying tomorrow. I want to make a bracha. Put me in. He says, six months appointment. Which was true. That's how it worked. Six months. He says, Ich flee Morgan. Ich flee Morgan. I'm sorry. There's hundreds of people waiting. I can't. It's not pikuach nefesh. So he decides not to listen. And he goes in, he waits, and he sees the secretary goes away for a few minutes. Right? So he tells somebody, he says, when the next guy comes out, before you go in, I'm telling, I just want to see the bracha. I want to get a bracha. Nothing, I'm going in 20 seconds. Just give me a bracha. I leave. I said, okay. So the guy comes in, and by the time Groner comes in, he wants to pull him out. But the Rebbe, you know, already he couldn't, the Rebbe was there, he said, lost Introduces it, we hasted, five Shapiro, from Vu, Antwerpen, and Balzachoset. He sees that he chapped it up his imagination as Fatracht. Like he doesn't know why. He says, a minute. Lord stands up from his chair, goes over, there's a filing cabinet in his room there, opens up, takes out a piece of paper, and says, is a brief from the Mamadine. Here's a letter from your mother. mother. Looks at the Rebbe, says, My mother, he says, From Iowa, my Emmas. Good 30 years. He starts reading <coughs> a letter to the Lubavitch Rebbe from Abelza Yidin in Antwerp. The doctors say, Lubavitch, the doctor, the doctor, the doctor say, I have a few weeks to live. Young mother, a house full with kids. Little kids, bar mitzvah, younger, a few weeks to live. Cancer, yana machla. Meila, I'm leaving the world. I'm leaving a husband. I'm leaving a house full with your son. I'm very worried. They're not going to have a mother. I'm very worried about them. I don't know what's going to happen to them. They're not going to have a mother. I want to ask the Lubavitcher Rebbe, Pasha to daven for my kids after I die. Daven for them. And she writes the name of every child. And she writes the name of five of the youngest, the youngest orphan with his mother's name. The Rebbe looks at him and says, this letter I received from your mother a few days before she passed away. He's, he's very emotional. So he right away says, Lubavitch Rebbe, I never saw anything from my mother. I never saw I never saw any letters from my mother writing. I didn't see in the house. It was like a fresh girls from his mother. They didn't speak a lot about his mother. He says, Can I have the brief? Can I have this letter from my mother? I want to take it home. He says, Nay, nay. The brief that bleiben done. The letter has to stay here. He said to my sister, I was wondering. You need my mother's letter. It's like it seemed insensitive to me. He said, oh, yes. Never had a mother. It's so one letter that ever has. Give it to me. What are you? What are you, what are you? It's like, really, you need a letter with a museum? So he, like, he didn't want to say, but he was. The Rebbe looked at him and he said, Yedin Erev Yom Kippur. Fardem was a gear up in Schultz, a Kalnidre. Nemechado is the mama's brief. Yedin Yar. Nemechlein the brief. Nemechdavim for all the kinder. Every year, it's been 30 years. I go, I take out your mother's letter. She asked me for something. Right before Kol Nidre, the holiest time of the year, I daven for all of you, Kindalach. Every one of us can take our life's experience, can take our pain, can take our ayeh mekoim kvoidah, not understand it and not chas v'sholem just surrender but never ever to look at ourselves as the eternal ones who are missing who are, the, who are just the, 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 you'll forgive me the losers the ones who don't fit in the ones who didn't make it these were G'dayli Yisrael who built up the Jewish world after the Chorban, each one in his derech and in his path, with a hatzloche elei kis, l'mayel l'mederech hateva. Everybody knows that the renaissance of the Jewish world in the last 70 years was inexplicable, non-explainable. 
And every, almost every single person in this room, if not every single person in the room, directly or indirectly, is Mishinantam Levanecha Elu Atalmidim. Either from one of them, all of them, some of them. Not because they didn't have pain, but because they knew, they knew that their mother is holding them in their arms. And their job at every single moment is to use their life to make the greatest move that will ultimately create a victory until the ultimate victory. When Vahoya Hashem Lechala Oy Oylam Bimheira Bi Amenu Amen. Thank you very much.